Hey, so I've been thinking a ton um, lately and really the last couple of years about mobility. And so there's really two kinds of mobility that are gonna span pretty much everything that you're gonna do in movement. One of those is gonna be passive mobility and the other is gonna be active mobility. So passive mobility is something super simple. If I hang down like this, that's gonna be passive mobility. Active mobility is really gonna be any kind of movement that challenges your range of motion. So if you're an inflexible person, doing a squat is going to be a form of active mobility. That's why they say in weightlifting, the best stretch for front squats is a front squat, right? The best stretch for overhead squat is overhead squat. So with that in mind, um, I've noticed, especially in CrossFit and the general fitness population, that everyone has super tight hip flexors. And so I've been involved with CrossFit for coming up on 12 years. This year in August will be 12 years in CrossFit. And so a lot of the people that were doing CrossFit ahead of me that I met back then are still doing couch stretch every day after they finish their workouts and they still have tight hip flexors. Right, so the couch stretch is going to be an example of that passive mobility, right? You stick your leg into the corner, you pull on it, it feels super loose when you stand up. Like you're gonna walk in a circle, right? Cause it's so loose on that side. And 10 minutes later, it's right back to normal. The next morning you wake up, you're stiff again, and it's not actually changing anything. It's great for loosening up when you're done just to kind of get that good feeling or maybe to get some mental relaxation before bed, but it's not creating meaningful change. And so I wanna show you my personal favorite stretch that I've learned maybe coming up on nine months ago and I've been doing it every single day and it has really changed the flexibility of my hip. So this stretch is called the diagonal stretch and I'll show you how to do it right now. So to start, we're just gonna place our feet with our heels together, toes turned out to about 45 degrees. From here, you're gonna put your toe in line with your heel and step straight back with both knees nice and bent. So this front foot is turned out for balance. If it's straight ahead, it's gonna be a little wobbly. So you wanna have that foot nice and turned out to stabilize it. Now from here, I'm gonna place my hand on my shoulder and I'm gonna reach back and touch my right heel with my left hand. So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna keep my eyes forward. I'm gonna lean back, bend that knee some, touch the heel, come back up. And I'm always gonna do a combination of reps and hold. So for example, 10 reps, and then on that 10th rep, hold for 10 seconds. So I would come back and I would touch and hold. Make sure I'm not balancing on my foot with my hand to make it easier. I'm just touching, Whew. and I come up and I shake it out. So when I'm leaning back each rep, if I turn to the side here, each time I lean back, I'm creating a stretch up through this front of my leg. And the reason this is different from the couch stretch is because as I lean back and create that stretch, this leg has to balance and stabilize. And so this movement of the knee and back is actually using the muscle and creating a brain connection to that muscle so that it learns the position and becomes functional in that position. So this active mobility teaches your body to be able to function in the range of motion that you put it in, it's more extreme ranges of motion, whereas the passive flexibility simply loosens up the range of motion but doesn't teach your brain what to do in those positions, right? So the active mobility is what we're looking for with this diagonal stretch, teaching the brain to move the body in a new range of motion so that we can keep it rather than just feel it for 10 minutes and then it's gone. So I'll do it from the side now so you can see it from another angle. I'm gonna get my feet to 45 degrees. This time I'm gonna do the left side. So I'm gonna touch my toe to my heel and then I'm gonna step straight back in my start position, you can see from the side, back is nice and flat here, so I'm not archy. Notice that that back leg gets straight. Now my low back arches. 
So I'm gonna have this leg bent, core is nice and flat and pretty neutral, and this front foot is turned out with that knee nice and bent as well. So from here, the hand goes on the chest. This hand is gonna go back towards that heel. So I'm going to lean back, keeping my eyes forward. I'm gonna to touch, boom, and come back up. So the movement, the lean back is coming from this leg here, from it bending and keeping my core nice and organized so that I don't tweak my low back. I'm gonna to touch, boom, and come back up. You'll find in this position, when you're first starting, mobility might be pretty tough. You might get pretty stuck. When I first learned it, I could barely touch my own butt and that's just where I was. So after about nine months, I can get back here pretty easily. But when you're starting, you may find that you have to reduce the range of motion. So if you're tight, if you're working from that starting position here, just touch that leg, come back up. Touch that leg, come back up. As you improve, you can touch a little lower down the leg. You can get towards, well, watch it out for balance. You can get to that calf. And eventually as you grow stronger, you'll be able to hit all 10 reps, plus the hold each set. So active mobility, another thing that's maybe a little different from passive mobility, passive mobility, typically you stretch for four or five minutes and then go to sleep. You finish your workout, you stretch for four or five minutes, you get in the car and drive home. With active mobility, you're gonna to wanna to do something like this for multiple sets. So you say five sets, 10 reps, plus 10 second hold per side with 90 seconds rest in between. And you're gonna to wanna to literally do this three to six times per week. I like to have at least one day of rest where you're not doing anything, but three to six times per week so that's gonna encourage you to be gradual with it because you know you're gonna be doing it again and again and again so you're not in any hurry to force any range of motion that could potentially hurt you. And you're also going to ensure that it gets drilled into your system by hitting all those sets, right? By hitting all that, all that time under tension, your body's really going to learn and it's really gonna pay off in the long term. So that's the diagonal stretch. Give it a shot, let me know how it goes and uh, I hope your hips are loose and gooey in six months or 12 months.